The TAP strategy is a framework for quality improvement developed by the CDC to use data for action to prevent healthcare-associated infections, or HAIs. The strategy is supported by a suite of tools and resources uniquely designed to address the prevention of catheter-associated urinary tract infections, CAUTI, central line-associated bloodstream infections, CLABSI, and Clostridioides difficile infections, or CDI. By now, you have seen how the target component of the TAP strategy identifies facilities and units with the greatest room for reducing the rate of HAIs and achieving hospital safety goals. We've also covered methods and best practices to deploy TAP facility assessments within these targeted locations. Now, let's take a look at how to interpret the TAP facility assessment results to identify opportunities for improvement and guide prevention efforts. CDC is available to provide customized feedback reports for each facility completing assessments. The feedback reports will be sent to partners via email and will include a PDF of the feedback report itself, as well as an Excel file that can be used to modify the feedback report and further explore the response data. The results presented in the feedback report represent self-reported awareness and perceptions among facility staff and are based solely on the data from responses. It's important for partners to review the results with knowledge and context of their current policies and practices to help interpret how the results apply to their units and facility. Facilities are also encouraged to explore results across various respondent groups, as reviewing questions that are relevant to select groups can provide more meaningful and actionable results. The first page of the feedback report provides a high-level summary of the potential gaps identified from the TAP facility assessments, along with additional information to help target prevention. At the top of the first page, facilities have the option to add their facility-specific infection data from NHSN. This section also includes the state and national standardized infection ratios, or SIRs, for the relevant HAI. This information can be helpful to frame the discussion when sharing the feedback report with key stakeholders and leadership within the facility. The assessment overview includes the total number of assessments collected from the facility, as well as the number of assessments that are included in the summary report. For the aggregate feedback report, these numbers will match. However, we will discuss in a few minutes how we can review results for just select units or respondent roles. When doing so, the number analyzed will be adjusted based on the number of assessments for whichever subset of data you are reviewing. This section also includes the overall score. The scoring methodology was created to provide another way to use data for action. Scores do not measure performance, should not be used to compare across facilities, and have no implications beyond helping facilities further target prevention efforts. For example, if scores vary across different units or respondent types, it may be helpful to review results for those groups independently to identify if unique gaps exist, helping to further tailor interventions. The Top Opportunities for Improvement section includes all of the questions for which potential gaps have been identified, separated by the domains within the assessments. Questions are flagged as potential gaps if 33% or more of respondents indicate unknown or if 50% or more of respondents indicate an unfavorable response. For example, questions are flagged as potential gaps if the sum of no and unknown is 50% or more, or if the sum of never, rarely, sometimes, and unknown is 50% or more. This section provides a summary of the potential gaps as a high-level overview, but facilities can then review the individual response frequencies to better interpret the information. Facilities are encouraged to review each potential gap in the context of their facility and ongoing or planned prevention efforts. The leading section provides a summary of items for which 75% or more of respondents answered favorably. In other words, questions for which 75% or more indicated yes or for the sum of often and always. This section may not contain all leading items as space is limited, but similar items will be grouped and summarized. The lagging section provides an opportunity to highlight and prioritize potential gaps. In short, all potential gaps will be displayed in the top opportunities for improvement section, and select gaps will be further summarized in this lagging section. Items are selected for this section based on response frequencies, clinical relevancy, and previous prevention efforts described by the facility as available. It's important to note that both the leading and lagging sections may be modified and updated by the facility, 
as each facility has the knowledge and contextual information to determine which potential gaps are most relevant and considered higher priority. These sections may be edited using the TAP Excel spreadsheet described later in this video. The second page of the feedback report displays the Respondent Demographics table, which summarizes the respondents by items, including their role, unit type, and years of experience. This information is helpful to consider when reviewing the assessment results, as it can provide insight into the interpretation of potential gaps identified. The Responses per Question section lists each question from the TAP Facility Assessment and the corresponding frequencies of responses separated by domain. The leading items will be highlighted in green, and the lagging items, or potential gaps, will be highlighted in red. The approximate number of responses per section is provided in the domain headers throughout. Facilities are encouraged to review each item to better understand and appropriately interpret potential gaps and opportunities for improvement. It is also helpful to review all assessment questions, not just those highlighted in red or green. For example, this question had over 30% of respondents indicate contact precautions are never, rarely, or sometimes rapidly implemented for patients as soon as the C. difficile test is ordered. Although this did not meet the defined criteria for a gap, it may still be identified as an opportunity for improvement for a facility. The last section of the feedback report displays select comments from respondents. It's important to note that these are comments from individual respondents and may not represent the views of other personnel. However, they may provide additional context and insight into perceived gaps. One comment in this example notes that bleach wipes are not always available on the carts outside rooms on contact precautions. Again, while this is just one respondent's observation, it may be helpful for the facility to take a deeper dive and review the availability and placement of the bleach wipes, as doing so may identify if improvements are needed. In addition to the PDF feedback report we just reviewed, facilities will also receive an accompanying TAP Excel spreadsheet. The Excel file can be used to edit the feedback report as needed and can be used to review assessment results by individual groups. Once you open the Excel file, you'll notice tabs across the bottom of the screen for the Input Data Sheet and the Feedback Report Sheet. Clicking each tab will allow you to navigate to each sheet. The Feedback Report Sheet is where facilities will access their customizable feedback report. The left side of the Feedback Report Excel Sheet provides detailed instructions for the completion of the feedback report if needed. CDC is able to complete these steps to create the overall feedback report for each facility upon request. The right side of the sheet displays the feedback report that facilities may then edit. All text in the leading, lagging, and top opportunities for improvement sections may be customized by the facility. For example, facilities may choose to modify the lagging box to better represent their priority items and or add additional information. Please note, the space available for text is limited and the column, row, widths, and heights should not be adjusted. CDC is also available to make any additional modifications needed. Facilities also have the option to include their infection data at the top of the feedback report, replacing the blue X's with their data and entering the relevant date range. Once all edits have been made, facilities can save their updated feedback report by selecting the Save as a PDF button located on the left side of the sheet. The individual responses from the TAP facility assessments will be contained within the input data sheet. The top row of the input data sheet identifies the columns of respondent information and assessment questions. The feedback report summary features can be filtered by any variable by using the input data sheet. On the input data sheet, you'll see a small gray box in the corner of each column heading. Clicking this gray box will display the values that have been entered into the column. To apply a filter, first click Select All to deselect all of the possible values in the column. You will then be able to check the box next to each value of interest. This will filter the spreadsheet to display the lines of data containing only the selected values in a given column. For example, you may select a physician within the respondent role column and the resulting spreadsheet will display only the responses from physicians. Once you have selected a filter value of interest, you can go back to the feedback report sheet and see the results for the selected criteria. All scoring, question frequencies, and highlighting will be automatically recalculated. It is important to note that all text entry fields will remain unchanged, including the leading, lagging, and top opportunities for improvement sections. 
In the example of filtering by physicians, you can see that the assessment overview updated to display the total number of assessments originally collected was 88. However, 21 were from physicians and were used to calculate the summary features on the current feedback report view. You may then scroll through the question frequencies to view the results for the subset of assessments in the filter. When filtering, it is important to consider the number of assessments displayed in the domain headers as fewer assessments summarized may influence the representativeness of the results. The filter feature on the Input Data tab can be applied to any of the columns. For example, you can also explore the summary statistics for each unit. Filters in multiple columns may be used simultaneously, allowing you to select on multiple criteria. For example, you may choose to filter by respondent role and unit to display the summary results for nurses that work in the ICU. Partners are encouraged to use the filtering capability and scoring methodology to further identify gaps and target prevention. For example, reviewing assessment responses and potential gaps for nurses and physicians independently may reveal that perhaps physicians scored higher in the antibiotic stewardship domain than nurses. This may lead the facility to target antibiotic stewardship education specifically to nurses as one of their planned interventions. In addition to reviewing number analyzed in the assessment overview box when filtering data, you can also reference the indicator on the left side of the feedback report sheet that will display a red yes when the filter is applied. The selection box in the column header on the input data sheet will have a small icon displayed when the filter is applied to that column. In order to display your entire data set again, Click the gray box again and check the box that says Select All. The feedback report sheet will now display a blue No, indicating no current filters are applied. The feedback report here shows the antibiotic stewardship results for all responses from the sample facility. Given the clinical nature of these questions and the multiple gaps identified, this facility thought it may be helpful to review the responses for the nurses and prescribers independently. To review the responses independently, they used the input data sheet in the Excel file and filtered to just the nurse responses. On the feedback report sheet, the number of analyzed now reflects just the number of nurse responses and all scoring and response frequencies are updated. Again, text in the leading, lagging, and top opportunities for improvement sections remain unchanged. The facility scrolled down to the antibiotic stewardship domain to review the results shown below. Now having filtered to nurses, these data may provide more meaningful information. For example, questions 5 to 9 have approximately 50% unknown, which may be expected for this group because these questions are asking about specific antibiotics that nurses do not prescribe. However, a facility may still identify an opportunity for improvement here by engaging nurses in their stewardship activities and educating them on the facility's efforts to monitor and reduce these antibiotics as they may be useful advocates and facilitators of appropriate antibiotic use. Further, this facility identified a higher priority gap when reviewing the nurse responses for question 3 regarding educating patients and family members about the risk of CDI with antibiotics. In contrast to questions 5 to 9, this question has very few unknown responses and over 65% never, rarely, or sometimes responses. This can be a great opportunity for improvement because nurses can play an integral role in helping to educate patients and family members about the risk of CDI with antibiotics. If this facility does not currently educate patients and families, a potential intervention may be to establish a system to do so. If this facility does have an existing policy to educate patients and families, then a potential intervention may be to engage nurses in this process as they should be aware of it and can perhaps assist given their frequent patient interaction. After reviewing the nurse responses, this facility then updated the input data sheet to view responses for just prescribers, such as physicians, NPs and PAs, and reviewed the updated antibiotic stewardship results for the same questions. This provided a deeper dive into the opportunities for improvement because it became clearer that prescribers were aware of the strategies used to monitor and reduce use of fluoroquinolones, but identified gaps for third and fourth generation cephalosporins and clindamycin. If this facility does in fact have a policy to monitor and reduce these antibiotics, then a potential intervention would be to educate prescribers and ensure they are adhering to the existing policies. However, if the facility does not currently monitor and reduce these antibiotics, then a potential intervention would be to establish policies to do so, perhaps replicating what is currently in place for fluoroquinolones. 
This is just one example of how filtering responses by various groups may provide more context and actionable information to inform next steps. Depending on the number of assessments collected from different respondent groups, some facilities may also receive an additional Excel file called TAP Assessment Results by Respondent Group. This document was designed as a visual aid to help facilities review TAP assessment results for various respondent groups simultaneously for the groups with enough assessments completed to appropriately summarize. This supplements the TAP Excel spreadsheet by providing a high-level summary and should be used with the TAP Excel spreadsheet described a few moments ago. For example, if a facility identifies that the gaps and or strengths vary widely for a respondent group, it may be helpful to return to the TAP Excel spreadsheet and filter responses to that group to review the detailed response frequencies for each question. As shown in this example, the file will contain each question from the TAP facility assessment in column A. The adjacent columns will then contain the assessment results for each subgroup. For each group, the letters S, N, or W are denoted based on the response frequencies for the corresponding questions. For example, column B will include all responses and should align with the aggregate feedback report you received. All questions highlighted with higher than 75% yes or often or always will receive a green S for strength. All items identified as a potential gap will receive a red W for weakness, and all items not meeting either criteria will receive a beige N for neutral. This format allows facilities to review their results with a wider lens, assisting in the identification of different opportunities for improvement across varying respondent groups. The rows directly under each column header provide summary information for that respective group, including number of respondents, score, and number of strengths and gaps identified. The number of additional gaps identified indicates the number of gaps for each group that were not highlighted in the overall feedback report created by CDC. These additional gaps are helpful to review because, one, they provide a deeper dive into potential opportunities for improvement for the particular unit or respondent group, and two, they were not identified in the overall feedback report received and thus may be otherwise overlooked. For example, Unit 3 has 11 additional gaps identified in this example. To take a closer look at which items these may be, you can use the filter feature within that respective column. Click on the filter arrow icon under Unit 3 and select just the W values. This will filter the Excel to show just questions that were gaps for Unit 3. You can now scroll down and see which items are a red W for Unit 3 that are not a red W under all respondents, indicating the additional gaps that were not highlighted in the aggregate feedback report. As seen in this example, the facility was able to identify that Unit 3 had a gap relating to provider education about the risk of CDI with antibiotics. Question number two. This may be important because it was not identified as a gap in any other unit. Interestingly, Unit 1 identified this item as a strength. This facility may find it helpful to take a closer look at the education provided in Unit 1 to perhaps replicate that in Unit 3 and other units. This is just one example of how this spreadsheet can be used to identify both potential gaps and strengths unique to each respondent group. When reviewing assessment responses, facilities should apply caution when generalizing results, especially when they include fewer than 30 respondents. This is also important to keep in mind when filtering the TAP Excel spreadsheet to review results for individual groups. It's also important for facilities to consider contextual factors within their organization, as well as current and ongoing prevention efforts. This information will help guide facilities in interpreting their gaps and understanding where their greatest opportunities for improvement are. For example, just because a question is flagged as a potential gap doesn't mean the facility needs to implement an entirely new policy. If a policy already exists, perhaps the gap was identified due to a lack of awareness or adherence to the policy, and a possible intervention may be providing directed training and education on the item. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at understanding assessment results and prioritizing opportunities for improvement to guide interventions and next steps.